You may think of social media sites like Facebook and Twitter as fun places to stay in touch with your friends, but they've also become rich sources of consumer information, and retailers are turning to them for market research on a regular basis. In March, Mac Cosmetics asked social media users to vote on which discontinued shades to bring back. Beer maker Samuel Adams asked users to vote on their favorite yeast, hops, and color for a new beer. And just last week, Frito-Lay invited visitors to its new Facebook app to weigh in on their favorite flavors of chips, barbecue, the saying. With us now to look at this growing trend are Danny Meyer, who's talked about social media's impact on his restaurant business, and Stephanie Clifford. She's a business reporter for The New York Times. Welcome to you both. Thanks. Stephanie, let's start with you. I remember back in the day they used to just use good old focus groups to figure out what consumers were thinking, but social media has changed the landscape how? Yes, the uh, focus groups are sort of the old school way yes. of doing it in this long drawn out research process. Now companies are realizing that there are millions of Twitter posts, millions of Facebook updates that they can analyze to figure out what consumers want. So when somebody's posting, I love the cake pops at Starbucks, it might not sound that interesting. When you see that across millions of people, you realize there's something there. And that's a real world example where Walmart saw that people were talking about cake pops in, in a really positive manner and brought them into its stores. Mm -hmm. uh, they also saw, for instance, that they carried a spicy chip called Takis. They analyzed... Takis. Takis. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> spicy rolled corn chip. Uh -huh. uh, and they realized that a lot of the positive chatter about Takis was coming from the Southwest. So Walmart rushed in some Takis competitors, including its own uh, Walmart brand chip. And they've done really well in the Southwest, all based on kind of this Twitter leading indicator. So, Danny, how do you use social media? Well, we use social media in a number of ways. The first thing I want to say is that I, I don't think you can ever use social media to replace your own intuition. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that at the end of the day, if we're all doing what everybody wants, then who really has anything to say? On the other hand, I think that you ignore it at your own peril. It's a great opportunity to listen to what people are saying. And it's a great opportunity to get your own message out and become part of the mind share. So what does it tell you? Well, it, it tells you a number of things. If people are loving your product, you certainly hear that right off the bat. Here's a quick example. We were launching our first ever bacon burger at Shake Shack <laughs> called the Smoke Shack. And what we decided to do was to put it out on Twitter uh, and on Facebook and to say we're going to launch this at Madison Square Park, our first Shake Shack, the first hundred, we only have a hundred of them on hand, right. and uh, come get it. And how they many sold came? out immediately, <laughs> and if you were to go to Google and, and, and Google Smoke Shack and then go to images, you would see 275,000 plus images that people have taken of that wow. burger. Mm. And you can't now, beat that's that just great. So you knew you that you had a winner it. then? We knew we had a winner and, and we rolled it out. So what would cause you, Danny, to change something in your, you, you say you go by your intuition, but, intuition, but what would cause you to change something? Well, I, I think that if you start to see a pattern, you really want to listen to it carefully. Now, we've always done that. In the restaurant business, we have an advantage because we're one of the few businesses where we manufacture a product and we are watching you while you are putting it into your body. Yes. So we're getting pretty instant feedback anyway and we're never going to give up mm. that high touch uh, just for high tech. But when you start to hear a pattern, if, if I were to start to see one person say that something was too salty, mm -hmm. I'd ask myself how I feel. Yeah. Once I start to hear 50 people say yeah. the pasta is too salty, I better take a I really good look at attention. that. pay attention. Good mm -hmm. point. Now, are other companies using social media to roll out products because I think um, even Amazon in one instance when they were rolling out uh, one of their new uh, Kindle products did not advertise with a big spread in the New York Times they announced it in social media and got the reaction they wanted. I mean, we'll take the spread in the New York Times. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Stephanie. Yeah. Very good. Uh, but yeah, they're using social media to promote products, and they're also using it to get feedback on products before they put them out. So there's a stuffed animal brand called Squishable, and on its Facebook page, it will put up two versions of a stuffed animal. So an elephant with its eyes shut, an elephant with its eyes open, ask people to vote on which one they should roll out and do the one that's most popular. So they're sort of creating instant demand for it. Other than Danny Meyer, who's sitting with us at the table, what other companies are using it well, do you think, social media? Well, you mentioned the Frito-Lay example, mm. which is great. And Frito-Lay asks uh, consumers to submit potato chip ideas. Uh, so churros is one that's doing well. Beer-battered onion ring is another. 
uh, people vote on it, and then Frito-Lay can map demand for it. And because Frito-Lay gets access to a Facebook user's profile when they vote on it, they can see, okay, woman over 40 in Baltimore like the churros flavor, woman under 40 in Texas prefer yeah. lemon-flavored chips. You can see instantly. And doesn't this help reduce the cost of your advertising, Danny? You can just put it out on Twitter. Well, and get instant results. Absolutely. We don't advertise anyway, so this is 100% of, of how we do our marketing these days. Uh, what I wanted to say also is that hospitality is ultimately a dialogue. Yes. And if you look at Twitter uh, or Foursquare or Facebook uh, as an opportunity to have a dialogue with your guests and get them interactive, mm -hmm. quick example, if I may, the Preakness of 2011, there was a horse called Shackelford running in the race. And we decided, let's have a dialogue with our guests. We said, if Shackelford wins the Preakness, free custard for everybody tonight. Of course, Shackelford wins the Preakness. <laughs> At that point, I think I had uh, probably 60 followers on Twitter. Yeah. That night, we gave away 800 cups of custard, and I ended up having 1,000 followers well, on did Twitter. Did you have enough custard night. in house? Uh, no, and, and my team wanted to fire me as the boss. <laughs> yeah, but hospitality is a religion for you yes. at your restaurant. That's part of the sort of core. Competence. It is, and what hospitality is is a dialogue, and that's what social media yeah. gives mm -hmm. you a chance to do. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, Thank Danny you. and Danny. Stephanie. Good to see you guys.